shepherds and the wise men came. It's the same way all God's children come, isn't it? Isn't that, I, I really didn't think about that until a couple of months, a week, about a month ago. I was preparing for some other messages. And, and, and that's, you know, everyone, everyone who's come to Jesus, they have to get off their seat, on their feet, and walk to the place of altar to make a profession of faith. We have at least 1,200 ways to communicate and relate to each other every day, all those devices out there. And, and yet, the invitation to come and be a part of God's family, you still have to get off your seat, on your feet, and walk. It all depends how far you walk. Like the wise men, they walked, what, 3,000 miles plus or something. Shepherds made, what, 100 feet, 600 yards, however. But we all got up and walked. I think, I just think that's, you know, boy, if that, well, and what else happens when we uh, get up our, off our seat and get on our feet? We go to Christ and what do we do? Same thing the shepherds and wise men did. We humble ourselves. We humble ourselves. And we also go, good, 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 good. <laughs> uh, hasn't changed a bit. And once we humble ourselves, then we then we rise up. And like the shepherds and the wise men, we go home a different way than we came. I'm not talking about route or the roads we take, streets we take. I'm talking about in heart. The shepherds came with heavy hearts in the sense of, boy, I sure hope we don't get caught. I sure hope we don't get found it out, found it out. Find it, oh, find it out, excuse me, find it out. I just hope we don't get, have our picture taken, put on the wall, all we can see. But when they went home, all that fear and, and, uh, and, 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 and reluctance, initial resistance, it was all gone. And, and, they, and they went forth. They went forth to... Uh, back to their flock. When you come to Christ, uh, you can't you can't go home the same way you came. In heart, it's a it's a lifelong transformative transformative process. But you can't go home the same way you came. In fact, you can't go home the same way twice every day of life. Really, it's more and more like Jesus. And, and so, that's similarity. And another similarity is when it comes to, and Mary pondered all these things in her heart. And that pondering was reflecting on all that had happened since uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth and Mary and, and Joseph and, and the... the, 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 the the stories, the, the songs, all, all, all that had occurred thus far. Uh, she pondered all those things in her heart. Last year I heard about a big old party they had in some small town in Iowa, uh, in the state of Iowa. There was a fellow who was turning 100, and no one had ever turned 100 in that community before. And so the community decided to have a, a great big party for this fellow. It was going to be in its birthday month of May. And, and so they had committees, and they had a committee for food and where it would be and, and what the entertainment would be. And, and they had, uh, had it all really, really, really planned out. And, and that night, uh, with great expectation, everybody came to the uh, fire hall for the, for the fellowship and for the uh, celebration. And they forgot to invite the person. 
They forgot to invite the honored guest. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's a true story. I never make anything up. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a true story. Uh, and and uh, the honored guest was forgotten. They were so planned, so committeeized that they forgot to fight the friend. That's why pondering is pretty important because you can forget the honored guest. You know, the honored guest can uh, what the honored guest means. And and so this holy season, to take those times to ponder as you wander and you as you wonder. Uh, and then there's one other similarity, and then I'll stop. Maybe. And that is the whole story of Christmas is our folk side by side the other. Side by side the other. And I tell you what, there's a lot of great addresses in around the world. Number one, Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, RD4 Roll Road, Northeast Pennsylvania. That's a great address. That's where I was born. <laughs> um, where you live is a great address. Uh, uh, we go vacationing at the Outer Banks, North Carolina. That's a great address. And uh, you all have your own great addresses. But the greatest address of all is side by side. And that's what all of Christmas is about then, and all of Christmas is about now, and always will be. Side by side. It is not an individualistic moment. It is a moment of community gathered together. And this gathering of the community together is side by side. And as, as uh, the Christmas story unfolds, if Mary and Joseph hadn't been side by side each other, and with Mary, Elizabeth and Zachariah hadn't been side by side, and the shepherds, I don't know if they really could have pursued it on their own. It was a commitment of, we can do this, we can do this together. And that's what the community and the family of God is all about. This first Christmas was the family of God gathering together, side by side. And it is, it is an address which has remarkable uh, treasures all involved with it, side by side. There are some special events that happen when you're side by side. You make a good time even better. You make a good time even better. But also you make a rough time a holy moment. I was, I'm always, I'm always moved by uh, when I hear stories about grandmas and grandpas or mom and dads or brothers and sisters as they're in reflection time. And what makes these moments so holy is, is how they've been there to take each other in and hold each other in the awfulest and the toughest times of life. And no one ever knows it unless Dennis and Dennis tell you all. You have moments like that with someone who were side by side, don't you? Those moments when they held you and, and was a lifeline to you for that moment and because they were there they kept you going. You know, those, those, are, those are side by side moments that are, are special. And, and they are critically necessary for uh, survival, for the wholeness of life. They're, again, moments that maybe we will share with somebody or don't share. And then when we're side by side, we share little stories that we just pass down one generation to the next. I, my mother told me when I was about eight years old that this was while I was picking turkey off the turkey. Uh, and she said, you know, Dennis, if you eat standing up, all the food goes to your big toe. <laughs> and I said, really? And Mom said, yeah. And she said, take off your shoe. You're eating and your big toe is big than your little toe. We pass on little family. You have some family expressions like that? What's the famous family expression you have that you've carried on one generation to the next. You didn't, cry, you didn't shout it across the room. You know if you eat, standing up, all the food's gone to your big toe. 
What's one of your favorite expressions that you pass down? His is don't worry about the mule loved wagon. Okay, <laughs> okay. Pass down. All right. Uh, what's another favorite expression that you've had passed down in your family? Oh, come on. What's... My grandfather, when I would get hurt or felt too bad or whatever, my grandfather always said it'll feel better when it stops hurting. It'll feel better when it stops hurting. Okay. But those are, those are shared side by side. And the whole Christmas story is out of side by side. Is our world real different? I don't think so. Um, there weren't but one or two ways to communicate in those days. I said earlier, there's at least 1,200 ways we can communicate today, but you know what? We communicate no better now than we did then. We just like to sell the gadgets and get the contracts. But the world's then the same as the world now. But it's real different. It's, it's different, in, but it's similar in another way. And I'll close with this. Christ the child is born. The holy child is born. And that brought in a new day, a new age, and a new beginning, and a new life. Thanks be to God. Similarities. What were they now? All right. Decrees. Waking tongues. Making do. Getting up to walk. Getting up to walk. Reverence and awe. Reverence and awe. Side by side. Side by side. Decisions. <laughs> and that of getting up new and going down humble. A blessed Christmas to you all. Let us pray. Lord, we as this song declares, what child is this? And we know in part, but may a part of our Christmas be that of Mary's. And pondering, pondering more and more the, the mystery of your love. And how, Lord, you descended to us. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, full of grace and full of truth. And that if we are to honor your holy name too, we are to descend to one another as well, to our neighbor, to the least and the needy, just as you came to us. And Lord, we're thankful for how, despite the world may be more busy, it was just as busy then. And though the world may be crowded, it was just as crowded then. And though the world today seems to be getting ever hopeless, the world then was seen as hopeless as well. We're grateful for how in the midst of all that mess, then and now, you send us the Christ child. And Lord, thank you again for a nice evening with, uh, with my family here. Lord, I do kind of like my independence and being by myself a lot, but I sure do appreciate friends like this who lift me up in prayer every day, and I thank them for that as I lift them up to. And thank you for Pastor Bill uh, and the church inviting me to be here tonight. In all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.